untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Grixis Colored Archfiend of the Dross plus Metamorphic Alteration combo deck. This is a two card combo that can essentially win us the game on the spot, but before we dive more into the details, let's go over the rest of the deck, since this combo is sort of built on the solid foundation of a Grixis midrange deck, where at one mana we've got the usual suspects, Thought Seize as Hand Disruption, and Fatal Push as Spot Removal. Can also enable Revolt pretty easily between the Blood Tokens from our Blood Tithe Harvester and the Treasure Tokens generated by the Shaman from Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Harvester also good at pressuring opposing combo and control decks as a 2 mana 3-2, and then against creature strategies we can still use it as removal and then the blood token it leaves behind gives us a bit more card selection we've got a volcanic spite dealing three damage to a creature planeswalker or battle at instant speed and we can also put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library and draw a card if we want to so it gives us a bit more card selection three damage also perfect for taking out an opposing grease fang or maybe a mayhem devil out of these sacrifice decks and then we've got some uh, counter magic with Make Disappear, which we can also keep up alongside our Impulse. So we can maybe take a look at the top four cards of our library instead and put one in our hand. It's also very useful at digging towards our missing combo piece. Then at three mana, of course, cannot build a red midrange deck without Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Still uh, legal in Explorer after being banned in Standard. Start out by making a Shaman token that can generate treasure. And we want to get to six mana, ideally, to cast both combo pieces in the same turn. So the added mana is very useful. Then on chapter two, we get to discard and draw. Also very helpful in digging towards the combo pieces. And eventually the Reflection of Kiki Jiki has a ton of great applications in this deck. Can copy our Blood Tithe Harvester to kill opposing creatures turn after turn, but can also maybe copy our Corpse Appraiser for added card selection, and copying an Archfiend of the Dross is also a quick way to turn a corner and close out the game, as we get to smack the opponent for a ton of damage in the air. And then Corpse Appraiser can also be a nice 2 for 1 after exiling a creature from a graveyard, to then take a look at the top 3 cards of our library and put one of them in our hand. And then we finally get to the combo of our deck, so after hopefully controlling the early game with all our cheap interaction, we can slam down an Archfiend of the Dross, 4 mana, 6-6 six, six flyer, enters the battlefield with 4 oil counters on it, but at the beginning of our upkeep we have to remove an oil counter from Archfiend, and then if it has no oil counters left we lose the game. So that seems like a pretty big drawback, although in reality the Archfiend tends to close out games before that matters, since it will also drain the opponent for 2 whenever an opposing creature dies, and we've got quite a bit of removal to enable that. And then especially once we start copying Archfiend with our reflection of Kiki Jiki, we can deal a ton of damage by flying over with some nice 6-6 six, six flyers. So how does Archfiend now combo with Metamorphic Alteration? A 2 mana enchantment aura enchants any creature, so it can enchant both our creature as well as the opponent's creature, but if we're trying to set up the Archfiend combo, we're gonna need the opponent to have a creature in play that we can enchant, and then as the Alteration enters the battlefield, we have to choose a different creature, although I guess it could be the same too, and then enchanted creature becomes a copy of the chosen creature. So we're gonna enchant the opponent's creature, and choose Archfiend of the Dross as a creature we're gonna copy, so now the opponent controls an Archfiend of the Dross, but to their surprise, the Archfiend does not have any oil counters on it, since the creature didn't enter the battlefield, which is when it gets those oil counters. So the opponent controls an Archfiend without counters on it, goes to untap, Archfiend trigger goes on the stack, and the opponent loses the game. So that's our two card combo with Metamorphic Alteration. Just need the opponent to have a creature and then have enough mana to play Archfiend and Alteration or maybe untap with Archfiend and then cast Alteration to win the game. And then of course a 6-6 flyer that can combine with removal and with reflection can also win games by itself. And Alteration also has some use cases outside of the combo with Archfiend. We can always enchant our own creature to maybe copy something powerful that the opponent controls. Could also use it to copy, let's say, our Reflection of Kiki Jiki so we can activate it a turn sooner if we put it on a creature that doesn't have summoning sickness. So that can also be quite handy and there's a lot of other applications for Alteration. But for the most part we're gonna try and hang on to it to try and combo kill the opponent with our Archfiend of the Dross. And then our mana base has lots of dual lands. We've got a couple shock lands here, two copies of both Watery Grave and Blood Crypt, four copies of Steam Vents, which makes up for the fact that we don't have any Blue Rats fast land. We're just playing Dark Slick Shores and Black Leaf Cliffs, because we need the Black Man on turn one for Fatal Push and Thought Seize, so there's no real need for a Blue Red land on turn one. And then we've got uh, two of each pathway to enter untapped later in the game. 
and then a one of each basic in case we need to search those up. And then I'm also running one Hive of the Eye Tyrant, fine to play on turn one to cast Fatal Push or Thoughtseize. And then late game gives us a 3-3 with Menace that gives us a bit of added graveyard hate, can also help close out games. Now, of course, if you're playing this in Pioneer as opposed to Explore, you would also have access to Dig Through Time as a powerful delve spell that can help assemble the missing combo pieces. That would also mean you maybe want to slightly adjust the rest of the deck, probably don't need Impulse as much, and you might want to play Consider as another cheap way to fill the graveyard to enable delve. You might have Fabled Passage in the mana base as another fetch land, and then you might want to increase the number of swamps in the deck so you have double black for Archfiend, and then uh, more ways to get lands with your Fabled Passage, and that way you've got a few more ways to fill the graveyard to enable delve on dig through time and fable also very good alongside it of course so yeah that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the draw with a decent hand we've got our two combo pieces and then fable for finding blue mana eventually opponent's black green turn one elf so it could be black green elves so thought sees wants to take away one of their lords maybe a company Never mind, it's a sacrifice deck. So Priest could disrupt our combo, so probably have to take that one. Opponent might be ramping towards a Bolas of Citadel, maybe playing Tyvar as well, which could get back Priest. For now I'm just gonna Thought Seize, play Tapland. And uh, yeah, we're gonna take quite a bit of damage off our mana base and between double Thought Seize here. But uh, opponent's not applying a ton of pressure, at least. And then Fable could discard Fatal Push, maybe another Fable. To let us uh, play Archfiend. Two cards in hand, and yeah, one of them is Bolas of Citadel. That's a disaster. Opponent could now have a very explosive turn. Cutthroat can drain us whenever a creature dies, but luckily another land on top. We found a land ourselves. I think I get rid of Fable and Fatal Push. And then keep land, maybe dig towards some other interaction. Although probably doesn't get much better than Fatal Push. So maybe I should still keep it since we can make a treasure here to enable Revolt. And uh, attack. Could have played Archfiend first. So we drain the opponent, but opponent's likely to take it anyway. And then I don't have to play Archfiend, since I could just play it and Alteration in the same turn to play around any interaction. So let's just Corpse Appraise and then keep up Fatal Push. And by getting rid of the Priest, they can get it back with Tyvar. I'll grab another Alteration, I suppose, in case of a discard spell. They make us discard Archfiends. I can dig for another. Cutthroats. Okay. So we're at 12. Can our opponent combo off here? We have a Fatal Push. Haven't decided yet if I want to fire it off on Cutthroats. Think we let them go, since uh, there might be scarier creatures. So looks like our opponent's done for the turn. I guess finding a Thought Seize to make sure the coast is clear would be nice. But I think it's time to go for it here. Attack with a Shaman, make a treasure. And then Archfiend plus Alteration. Okay, so enchant an opposing creature. And make it a copy of Archfiend. Doesn't have any counters on it. Opponent untaps and explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And we're missing our combo pieces. But we've got a decent mix of uh, creatures and interaction. So I'll give it a shot. Don't love seeing turn one Elvish Mystic. Especially when we're on the draw. So, possible I should a mulligan for one mana interaction. Ooh, Steel Leaf Champion. So, opponent a Stompy deck. Okay. So, we have Fable. I would love to hit my land drop for it next turn. So, maybe I keep a Mig Disappear and then Impulse if we don't have to. And then Fable can help me dig towards Archfiend, perhaps. Maybe that's the 
easiest path to victory. But we're gonna be under quite a bit of pressure. Opponent could keep up four mana for collected company. I think I'm still gonna be forced to impulse then. It's gonna be a gore claw instead. Okay, so opponent's gonna cheat some more creatures into play next turn. That does apply a lot of pressure, so I might have to just counter here. Hope to draw lands naturally. And if not, I could still impulse. Alright, land is good. Gives us a chance here. I'm gonna play Fable over Appraiser, but that's also a close call. The extra mana from the Shaman could certainly come in handy. Take 5, down to 10. And another Gore class next. Found a Fatal Push, that's excellent. So Impulse might not be necessary since it doesn't add anything to the board. Maybe I should just ditch Alteration and not try and go for the combo, try and play a more mid-range game with Reflection taking over instead. Did not find land, so still gonna attack. And then push with the Treasure Token. And then I can play Corpse Appraiser to hit my land drop that way. And yeah, get the Swamp. Archfiend could have been nice to go with Alteration, but I don't think that's what this game is going to be all about. Don't have double red, so can't actually double Harvester next turn unless we get to attack with a Shaman. We fall to five. And another Steel Leaf. Okay, so we've got our work cut out for us here. Lovestruck Beast makes a 1-1. And there's an Archfiend. So Appraiser could block Champion, and then Archfiend could block another Champion. That would discourage an attack. And then next turn I can drop Harvester with Reflection to take over. Seems fine. But if they have a removal spell, we're dead. And Nykthos also has a very high devotion count now. So whatever they have in hand, they can cast. Cavalier of Thorns. Alright, so maybe this is more of a devotion deck after all. Just with an aggressive draw. And there's Kiora. And an Elder Gargroth is next. 6-6. Six, six. Vigilance, Reach, and Trample. Okay, so looks like the board is going to stall out a bit. And we might end up losing to our own Archfiend unless we find another Alteration. Did find red mana, so I can play Double Harvester and Copy with Reflection, so that's impressive. And then if Cavalier dies, get back Kiora, that's fine. So I want to kill Cavalier before we kill Gergroth, if we get the chance. So play Harvester. Play another one. And activate now. And take out Cavalier. Put and put Gore Claw on top. And we'll pass it back. So your opponent can play Beasts and Gore Claw, maybe draw with Gergroth. Although, if they don't answer Reflection, it can just take over the board. It's your opponent's on the beat-down plan. So if they're going for an all-out attack, I guess we can eat a champion, double block Gergroth, and chum Steel Leaf. That seems okay. I guess we'll uh, triple block so we don't take any trample damage. And then next turn, copying Archfiend can hit them for 12 in the air, and that might be able to close out the game here. Yep, Putin just plays a Lovestruck Beast, so we should be in a clear. Copy Archfiend, 12 power in the air with haste, and win the game. Awesome, so yeah, close one here against Monogreen. If they had a removal spell at any point, we could have been dead. On to the next one.
Okay, we're on the play with a solid hand. We're missing our combo pieces, but between Impulse and Double Fable we get to dig pretty deep. Got the interaction early. And uh, can play this on black to keep a push without paying life. Although I'll likely end up taking two anyway. Just makes it less obvious that we're keeping a push. Opponent cast Thoughtseize. Takes Fatal Push. Now we could return the favor here. Play tapped Watery Grave. Seems fine. I see opponent's uh, Grease Fang Parhelion combo deck. So, yeah, probably have to take Grease Fang and then hope they don't find another copy or can't stay away to get it back from the graveyard would be bad. And they also need to find a way to put Parhelion in the graveyard or mill another copy. So no Parhelion is good news, no Grease Fang either. Opponent got Supplier. Could have also gone for uh, Rafine's Informant to discard Parhelion, but opponent's got other plans. Play Fable on 3. Opponent's looking at the graveyard, so it's going to be Rafine's Informant. Plus a Stitcher Supplier. So Parhelion's in the graveyard. If our opponent finds Grease Fang, we're in trouble. And at 5 mana, they can bring one back. Found Alteration. So I don't think we're realistically dealing 16 damage before opponent brings back Parhelion, so going for the combo is probably the best course of action. So to make that happen, discard Harvester. And then could also maybe find a Fatal Push to kill Grease Fang at instant speed thanks to the Treasure Token. So probably means ditching another Fable and keeping Impulse as well. Okay, Volcanic Spites, instant speed removal for Grease Fang, that's good. So I can attack with the Shaman, go up to 5 mana total. I guess I could main phase Impulse, see what else we find, and then uh, take it from there. Found our Archfiend, okay. So I can attack, Spite means we don't die to the combo next turn. And if I find another mana source, I can play Archfiend and Alteration in one fell swoop. Opponent trumps to mill more cards. Okay. So, unless they go Thoughtseize plus Grease Fang somehow, we should be okay. And there's a Chariot, there's Grease Fang, so let's make sure we go full control so Grease Fang doesn't trigger. Although. Sometimes what you can do is let them bring back a vehicle, kill Grease Fang before they can crew it, um, which would be fine too here, but let's just avoid the situation altogether, because they could bring back Chariots as well now. And I'm very happy with my hand, thank you very much. We get to attack, and combo the opponent out. Play Archfiends. Play Alteration. Selecting Archfiends, opponent untaps, and even if they had removal in hand to kill their own Archfiend, it would be too late since the trigger's already on the stack. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we're facing a Gigantha deck. Our hand is missing red mana. If we had red mana, this hand would be quite solid. Thought season into Spite into Corpse Appraiser. As is, it's pretty sketchy. Okay, this is better. And then keep Fatal Push into Harvester into Appraiser, I think. Ditch Spite. Since uh, at least the creatures can apply pressure against a more controlling strategy. Opponent on Red Black, Sacrifice. So, yeah, the Witch's Ovens can make it difficult to combo with the opponents, since they can just sacrifice whatever creature we try to enchant. Unless they uh, are tapped out here. And they've got the uh, cat as well. Yeah, I'm not gonna have an easy time getting the familiar in graveyard to then potentially exile with Corpse Appraiser. That's of course the goal. So you just have to hope our opponent's not careful and leaves the familiar in the graveyard without being able to uh, get it back.
Yep, there's a turn three Mayhem Devil, so that's a must answer. Okay, so now what? Could use Harvester, kill Familiar, opponent sacks it to the Oven, and then I have Fatal Push enabled, but at what cost? So probably better to then pass the turn. I can keep a MIG disappear for their next play. Harvester blocks Devil. And if they take it out with the uh, Devil triggers, then I have Revolt enabled for Fatal Push. Sure. I'm just going to pass here. Let her opponent do the work. And her opponent did not use Oven out of turn. They're going to claim my Harvester. Definitely don't want to let them steal it, so... Yeah. Devil and can't attack. Take out Devil. And I can't sacrifice in response. But the Corpse Appraiser is not going to be able to exile the cat here. We can at least exile the Mayhem Devil. And go digging. The cat is back. And what do we find? Probably a Fable. Do still want to play an extra land out. There's a Furnace Reigns now to steal Corpse Appraiser, sure. Take four, opponent sacks it to the oven. Also have to watch out for that hive in their mana base. And Unlucky Witness is next. Okay, one card in hand. I'm just gonna play Fable. Could also Corpse Appraise Exile my own creature. But uh, I think we want to keep digging towards our combo pieces. And then I will still play a land out. Since we do need... Six mana to potentially pull off the combo in one fell swoop. Okay, opponent's not activating Hive this turn. Maybe afraid of a fatal push. And then I'll block Familiar. Let them sacrifice it if they want. Opponent has a treasure and a food token. Unlucky Witness finds another Familiar. So technically I could find the two combo pieces, opponents used oven, they're tapped out, so yeah, this is a window of opportunity here. Shaman can make a mana, so I don't need the land. So question is whether I should use a blood token, and maybe I do, because it digs a card deeper towards Archfiend plus Alteration. Fable. See what we draw for turn, but then I have to decide if I want to aggressively dig for the missing combo pieces or if I try to keep some good mid-range cards like Fable and Corpse Appraiser. And given that we don't have either combo piece, I think I just discard land and then I can play Appraiser plus Fable here. Okay, so let's start by attacking. Again, wouldn't be able to exile the opponent's familiar since they have plenty of food tokens to bring those back. Opponent happy to trade. And let's appraise some corpses. Okay, found our alteration. I'll keep that one. And then probably still play Fable. Fable. 
but if our opponent keeps up Witch's Oven, it's going to be tough to combo them out, as we said. Opponent has one card to discard at most. Another Mayhem Devil's probably game over at this point. And Deadly Dispute's very good too. Sack to draw two, make a treasure. Harvester, that one still may be beatable. We are getting our Reflection as well next turn. So that could be an alternate path to victory. Okay. So what we could also consider is turning one of our creatures into a Reflection, a creature that doesn't have Summoning Sickness. So we can use it a turn early. Definitely discarding Dark Slick Shores. Question is whether I discard anything else. Opponent does have Oven available, so I'm not going to be able to combo them with Alteration. So maybe I should then keep Harvester as something I can copy with my Reflection of Kiki Jiki Alteration, if you will. Find our own hive. Okay, so how do we want to do this? Turn the Shaman into a Reflection of Kiki Jiki. And then the priority should be to kill the opponent's Harvester so it cannot take out my Reflections. Or my Harvester. Being able to copy Corpse Appraiser at instant speed now makes it harder for the opponent to manage their familiars as well. But this is step one. And then I'll go ahead and play my Hive since we might be able to use all the mana once we start copying Corpse Appraiser for card advantage. Probably no point in attacking since the opponent can just jump and bring back Familiar. Opponent gets their own Reflection, but we're the ones with a Harvester to copy and remove stuff. There's still a lot of top decks we want to avoid. Mayhem Devil is high on that list. Not sure if our opponent's playing the new Obnixilis, also good with the Familiar Oven combo. But yeah, sometimes finding creative ways to use alteration other than the combo can be nice. Claim the Firstborn, uh-oh. Stealing our Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Okay. So that's getting sacked to the oven, no doubt. At least we still have another one. They're not sending in hives, so they're planning to put Gigant in hand, I suppose. All out attack. Just gonna block all three. Okay. Well, as of the settles, we're still controlling a reflection of Kiki Jiki. There's Archfiend. So now if we can find alteration, we can win the game since their opponent stepped out of their oven. So yeah, I could copy Corpse Appraiser and see if we can find another Alteration. Although I guess I'll be a mana short of casting Archfiend and Alteration. So for now, copying Harvester is probably the best move. And then I can still play Archfiend as well. At least Claim cannot steal Archfiend to kill me on the spot, so that's important. What if I copy Archfiend? That's not as good here since our opponent's still at 25. With Double Reflection, you can also use the kind of Reflection trick where you copy Reflection with Reflection in the opponent's end step to make an army of 2 twos. But I want to be able to copy something now. So yeah, opponent's slowly draining us here with the Cauldron Familiars. But now with Archfiend, we've got a pretty fast clock. Still want to leave some blockers back for Hive of the Eye Tyrants. And now if they sack a familiar, the Archfiend will also drain him for two. So it's still going to be a sweat. Hoping to just find Alteration to close out the game in style. Another claim the Firstborn, ouch. Okay, so that kills a Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Still have another one. So I guess it could have been worse. And now if Hive attacks, I could still double block it. But then we lose Corpse Appraiser, which is our card advantage engine here alongside our uh, Reflection of Kiki Jiki. 
So I am forced to double block here. Take two, and then we're still alive, but without a Corpse Appraiser. Archfiend triggers. Come on, alteration. I'll land. So I guess we activate a blood token to keep digging. And there's also still a Witch's Oven to worry about, so even if we top deck alteration, it's not going to be that simple. Thoughtsy certainly doesn't do it. Could still activate Hive, but then we can no longer activate Reflection, so I don't think that's good enough. Fatal push. Yeah, with a copied Archfiend. Dose it for 12. If our opponent sacks Familiar, that's 4 more damage. We're getting pretty high up there, but probably not high enough. I guess one thing I could do is, like, block with, let's say, Reflection on Familiar, and then kill it myself with Fatal Push, so that the Familiar doesn't go to the graveyard, but they can still use the Oven. So yeah, between a rock and a hard place for sure. And I'm pretty sure we're just dead. Sack Familiar, bring it back, we're at 2. Attack with both Familiars, if I take it I'm dead, and... Opponent's got one food token, plus they can make another one. So I have to somehow kill my own creature here. A lot to untap. Opponent goes digging, discarding mountain. Okay. And they're just gonna attack with both familiars. Might have to discard fatal push to the blood token to enable revolt, find another fatal push so I can kill my own reflection. Sure. So, see what we can find here. Okay, we found a Fatal Push. So I think I can survive this turn. I guess I can copy Archfiend as well instead, and then still have my Reflection in play. That seems better. So go to Blockers. Block, block. Wait for my opponent to sacrifice a Familiar. I was hoping they would have sacrificed the other one. Because now I'm forced to fatal push the real Archfiend instead of the fake one. So that the familiar doesn't die. Because otherwise they can bring it back. So yeah, if they had sacrificed the other one, I would have still had my Archfiend in play. But now, opponent's got two food tokens, but only one familiar in the graveyard. So I'm actually still alive somehow but I'm not sure how long that's going to last. And a Harvester. Alright. Archfiend goes away, and we should just untap and lose. Alright, we gave it the good old college try here. Found a way to survive the turn, which is already kind of an achievement unlocked. But yeah, even had our opponent somehow... Sacrifice the other cats. I'm uh, pretty sure we still lose, even if we get to untap with Archfiend. Copy it, 12 damage, plus a Hive. Opponent's got two blockers back, so... At least it would have been closer. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is starting with the Thoughtseize, turn to Good Harvester. Yeah, this seems keepable, not exciting, but good amount of early interaction. And another Grease Fang deck with double Grease Fang, Parhelion, Supplier, Salvage. Okay, that's tough. So they're just trying to minus screw them by taking Grizzly Salvage. Might be one approach. If I take Grease Fang, they've got another. And Salvage also puts the most cards in Graveyard to put another Parhelion there. Ok, 
can't stay away. Another way of bringing back a Grease Fang. Did find another Thoughtseize, but at this point, probably just go for Harvester. So still no white mana for the opponents. I'm gonna have to hit a land drop for a turn. Okay. Can attack with Harvester. Opponents likely jumping to try and mill Parhelion. So still no vehicle in Graveyard. Two copies of Can't Stay Away, so at five mana they can bring back Grease Fang. I guess for now we'll still Thought Seize just to be mana efficient in case we pick up a third copy at some point, or removal for another Grease Fang. So they don't have much else going on. They found a white mana, but it's tapped, and now a Make Disappear, that's a huge draw. So right now Grease Fang doesn't do anything, so I don't have to keep up Make Disappear necessarily, unless her opponent draws a Stitcher Supplier and Mills Parhelion. So I could just play another Harvester, or maybe Impulse to hit my land drop first, and then try to uh, play Harvester afterwards. Volcanic Spite, another insta-speed answer to Grease Fang, so maybe that's just a way to go. And then at this point I'm strongly considering just using the Blood Token to discard Alteration, although with only one Blood Token we won't be able to kill Grease Fang with Harvester, which is something else we might want to be doing. Okay, Rafine's Informant's a good one. Can discard Parhelion and provides a blocker for Harvester. So now we need to fight through essentially three copies of Grease Fang between the one in hand and the two copies of Can't Stay Away. Yeah, I guess uh, we'll eventually get there. Found the Archfiends to maybe combo with the opponents. So now I could maybe use the Blood Token to discard a Harvester, since now Harvester is not really an answer to Grease Fang anymore, down that they can already bring back a Parhelion with it right away. I guess Make Disappear could still require a creature as Sacrifice, but I don't need the one in hand. And I might want to dig for land. So discard Harvester. Find a Fatal Push. Would have been good with a Blood Token still in play. Uh, now I'm forced to just pass a turn. Not hitting my land drops is annoying, since it's going to be hard to assemble Archfiend plus Alteration. So I'm probably going to start by casting the Volcanic Spite, since it's easier to counter a Can't Stay Away than it is to counter a Grease Fang. They have another Can't Stay Away. I guess that still needs white mana, if they have one in hand, to just cast for two. So we'll go full control. Cast the Spite. Take out Grease Fang. And ditch a Fatal Push, I think. Find another Spite, so that's another answer to Grease Fang, but again, we're not making a ton of progress. Cliffs at least is a land, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass. Also wanna keep a creature in play so that we can enchant it eventually with Alteration. Put on Cast to Grease Fang, so that gets around Make Disappear without Casualty. So I could still sacrifice Harvester then. Or I could Volcanic Spite, but there's nothing in hand I really want to get rid of. So I think I'm okay with Make Disappear with Casualty then. We will start getting attacked by the Rafine's Informants. Okay, land is good. So, spite the next Grease Fang, and then hope to draw land to set up our Wombo Combo. Now what I could also do is let them put Parhelion in play with a trigger on the stack, kill Grease Fang, since they cannot crew uh, with their uh, Rafine's Informant, and that way 
they actually won't be able to uh, bring back Parhelion right away with the next Grease Fang. And it goes back to hand. Okay, alteration. So, yeah, play Archfiends. We're at the mercy of the opponent here. Bring back Grease Fang. No vehicle in the graveyard unless they can discard Parhelion. I would still be dead to the Angel tokens despite Archfiend blocking the 5 5. And the next turn alteration could be game. So, do they have a discard outlet? Informant attacks. I have to take it since we need a creature to enchant. Our hand is Thought Seize Proof at least. Untap. Alright, let's have a look at the opponent's hand too while we're here. <laughs> Double Parhelion. Alright. No big deal when we can just win the game. So, Informant turns into an Archfiend. No need to attack. Untap and win the game. Wow, what a close game here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a solid hand. Not very high on early interaction, that's the main drawback here. But a lot of card selection and ways to maybe assemble the combo. And being on the play means we can afford to keep a slightly slower hand. Pass with Impulse. Opponent with turn 1 Hive, turn 2 Hive. So, could be mono black. Find our Alteration. Yeah, I guess we'll grab it here, but it's gonna be difficult to pull off our combo. Start with Fable, always good. Token's likely dead, but Chapter 2 will still be quite useful. And then we need to probably get to 6 mana to set up Archfiend plus Alteration in the same turn. And hope the opponent's tapped out. Liliana can also make us discard here. So I'm guessing one Archfiend can go. That way I can eat it with a Corpse Appraiser. Fatal Push can go and maybe a land. Even though I want to draw lands with a Liliana in play, it's going to be difficult to keep enough resources to set up the combo. So maybe Alteration just has to go but I want to keep the dream alive of setting it up. But this might just be a game where I need to try and outgrind the opponent with Fable and other value creatures. Let's just discard Fatal Push for now and see where we're at. Play Appraiser. And find another Alteration and Harvester. Let's grab Harvester, play Hive. Then I'm not sure yet what we're going to do with this Liliana. They might just minus two on Appraiser first. Nope, still discarding. So maybe working their way up towards an ultimate. Yeah, this alteration plan's looking worse and worse by the minutes. Just get rid of it. Go for the throat, kill Appraiser. Alright, now with... Uh, Fable of the top, we can just double spell. Since I could activate Hive to pressure Liliana, but then if they have a Fatal Push, that's kind of a disaster. Whereas now I can double spell. Did not look like they had any Fatal Pushes left. So they can take up Liliana, make me discard Archfiends. But they might start firing off some removal and using the minus two instead. And Hive's gonna be a pretty important role player too in this game. Okay, so what do we sacrifice first? Might be the Shaman token. Since we don't really need the extra mana. Nicer to copy a Harvester with Reflection. Sanitarium, each player draws a card and then discards and a Turgrit. I see. Okay, so I don't want to discard anything while Turgrid's in play, otherwise our opponent gains control of it. So let's submit zero. Yeah, if we sacrifice Harvester to kill Turgrid, then our opponent will also gain control of it. I guess I can just play 
arch fiends and then copy that with reflection and just try to beat the opponent to death. Probably should take out Liliana first. And then our opponent won't be able to gain control of our token at least. So now a Sanitarium can still force us to draw and discard and maybe put something in play with Turgrid. A land is fine. Yeah, pretty nifty combo. That wasn't available before. A Mutavolt, another creature land. And what's their last card? Fatal Push, Harvester. Well, we're on the Archfiend plan, if that much is clear. Could also top deck Alteration for the win. So I can animate Hive and still copy Archfiend. And then I don't mind if they make me discard Volcanic Spite. And what to exile? Say a Liliana. Okay, opponent's gonna double block Hive and offer a Mutavolt. It's also gonna trigger Archfiend a bunch. So your opponent's at four. I'm liking my chances, but uh, the game's not over yet. Sanitarium. Can discard a Cliffs instead and keep Spite. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Yeah, close game and interesting deck from our opponent here, but luckily did not need to assemble our combo to win this last game. Still quite pleased with how the alteration combo performed. We've got a solid base of Grixis cards, and on occasion we can kill our opponent out of nowhere, which is always a nice perk of any deck. Now, of course, the matchup against the Sacrifice deck seems pretty rough, especially when our opponent can foil or combo by just sacrificing the creature we try and enchant with the Witch's Oven. So don't expect to win that matchup very often. And it's also a deck that's currently on the rise, Aragdo's Sacrifice. So maybe not the best time to be playing Alteration on the ranked ladder, but if you're just looking for a fun combo deck to spice up your Explorer or Pioneer games, this might be a good place to start. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.